What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Concord Health Podcast. We've had a little bit of a uh, rebranding. Used to be the Concord Wealth Podcast. And we're going for a round two today with my guest, Uri Lorenko. We had a, we had a podcast already, but it went a bit uh, went a bit tits up, so to say, right? So we actually got a really good podcast um, on the same subject as we're going to do today um, about golf and, and how to improve your golf game as an amateur um, if you've got like restricted time or, or kind of a, a limited, you know, skill set or, 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 or access to a coach, for example, we've done a great podcast. It was like an hour and a half long, but it just, um, we had a technical hitch with the audio and it just kind of couldn't go out there. So we had to delete it. So we're going to do this again today. Um, excuse my voice. Hopefully it won't be me doing much of the talking. I've got a bit of a croaky voice. Um, I got sick on this Corona virus lockdown thing. So luckily we got technology and we can still get things done anyway. So um, Uri, how are you? What's going on? Yeah, good. All well, thank God. Have, have, it didn't hit me like it. Well, it didn't hit me at all, thankfully. I'm self-isolated at home. Haven't seen anyone in a week. <laughs> yeah, man, it's tough. That's, that's, I think that's like the toughest thing for some people, right? Is yeah, we're getting smashed up financially. Well, a lot of us are. A lot of people are, should I say, and um, we're um, a lot of people are sick and unfortunately losing their lives. But there is the other part, the loneliness for a lot of people is is quite psychologically can be damaging. Yeah, just got to distract yourself. Unfortunately, the golf courses are even closed, which that's that really upset me. But um, which I think they're one of the safest places to be because you're not near people. But just going with what they're saying. Why, why do you think, why, why is that? I mean, really, they could definitely be open, right? Or, or maybe not. I they don't know. could, but I think that, I guess they just don't want too many people doing, doing it. But I reckon, I reckon people, they, the golf course could manage it. You know, they could just have certain tee times. They could have bigger gaps between uh, uh, playing. They could have, you know, maximum, well, there's always a maximum of four people anyway. But just, you know, the, the golf course I played at last, last weekend, the week when before, um, just before the, the, the lockdown here, they, uh, they, they took all the rakes out of the bunkers so no one would obviously handle them. They closed all the ball washing things, told everyone, you know, just leave the flags in, don't take the flags out so you're not t- touching anything. And we all, we all just kind of stuck to that and we thought it was, this was going to be great having all this free time to play golf. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, Crazy times out there, man. I, I mean, everyone just needs to stay safe, stay safe, stay productive at home. Stay, stay isolated for now, and hopefully we can all come through it. Um, yeah, I've got loads of distractions somewhere. <laughs> yeah, positive, good one, <laughs> I hope. Um, so uh, on the Concord Health Podcast, we love talking about everything from, you know, anything to do with health, fitness, sports, money, finance, etc., cetera, um, and just kind of general mindset stuff. And we're going to blend a little bit of, of two or three of those things together today. Um, and the main focus is going to be, um, golf. So, so give everyone a little bit of a lowdown on your golf journey because I know you're a you're a great golfer. Um, yeah. I've seen you play myself. Um, you know, I don't, I don't. I used to work on a golf course. I don't play golf to any particular high level, but I know a good sportsman when I see one being a sportsman myself and having trained a lot. So, so tell us a bit about your journey and and you know where you're at currently and your past, etc. Well, um, I played golf from the ages of about twelve. I started playing golf when I was twelve till. Um, till 16 and I, I got to a good level at, at that age I got down to a 12 handicap which was not bad and then I literally didn't touch a golf club for over 10 years I think I was 26 27 when I picked up the club again and just fell in love with it like immediately and I was I'm one of those what are you now? Uh, officially I think I'm either a six or a seven I haven't been no, a no, no, no. for the listeners sorry how old are you now how, how old am I 32 yeah. almost cool. 33 cool. Though. getting old mm-hmm. getting, <laughs> so, wise. Uh, old, getting wise Getting wise, yeah. Um, so yeah, I didn't play golf for ten years. Then I just got obsessed and uh, just sort of playing more and more. Like literally, with you know, with being a PT like you, we sometimes have gaps in the middle of the day. And I just literally, I went to the, to the golf range all the time. I, uh, I I played nine holes when I had a long enough gap. I played eighteen if I had a quiet afternoon, and I'd play most weekends. So I was one of the lucky ones where I got, I got to spend a lot of time on golf, and I got down to to a much better place than, I, than, than I'm at currently. Right now, I'm playing definitely to my handicap. I'm playing like seven, eight, nine, sometimes higher than that because I only play once a week, sometimes twice a week if I'm lucky. Yeah. Um, but I'm probably more consistent than I was back then, actually, just because I would have the amazing round where I'd play 
one two under. This is obviously after about two years of getting back into it, but um, playing to a very very good level, like I suppose you could say around around, around about the scratch level um, for golfers who know about golf. And yeah, I just uh, I played some some interesting amateur and amateur competition. Nothing major, just for my, for my cl- for the club I was a member at. And now I just do it socially because um, you know it's just it's just good fun. It's good to network. It's good to have a laugh with your mates. We always have a little bit of a bet playing whatever. But um, I've had to just kind of tweak the way I, I practice because I used to have a lot more free time. I used to have you know I wasn't as busy as I am with work now. I wasn't doing as many things. So I had the free time to go to the golf range. But I also realized that I was having too many lessons. These are things I wanted to talk to you about in, the, in this discussion anyway. But I started having too many lessons. I started having too, too, too many lessons. Too, I was having a lesson every week, which I think is way too much. Interesting. We'll, um, we'll cross that bridge, okay. Yeah, I, wanted, I, I would like to, if I could help anyone just with their golf, <laughs> yeah, I'd tell them all, just through my experience, what I think are some of the mistakes I made. Yeah. But I was playing some seriously good golf. Then I, I had a, he was a really good coach. I'm not going to name names with anything like that. But I think I just had too many tweaks made to my swing, try to do too many, too many different things. And I started playing horrific golf for about a, a year, like maybe even a bit longer. Yeah. Uh, changed coach again. Then I also, again, he wasn't the right coach for me. I found a really amazing coach um, as well. And he's, he's awesome because he's not like, you need to see me every week. He's like, four, six weeks will be fine. Just practice once or twice a week. And he's simple. That's, that's the, the best bit of advice I could, find, I could give anyone is find a coach who makes things simple. If it's, if it's not simple, if there's loads of swing changes, if they try like what they call the ba- Band-Aid or plaster, um, thing where they just try and fix something small every time you go and see them. They're not the right coach. You want someone who, you know, you can plan ahead, um, who simplifies everything for you. And who, one you get on with and you trust. Those are the main things. But now, you know, I play way more to my handicap and I play a hell of a lot less than I used to. I still have the occasional good round where I'm like one, two, three over par, which is awesome. But I also, like, I didn't play golf. I, I broke my toe and... I uh, had ligament damage in my left wrist and the first round back I played 16 over so you know I'm <laughs> yeah. not saying I'm an amazing golfer but I'm a pretty good golfer compared to most so what's the, what's the best handicap you've been at Where, where's the, the best place you've, you've been just to give people an idea of how, how good you've been at your peak well the thing about handicap handicap takes a while to get down when you're at that level but it was six it was six official handicap but I was people used to always say I was a bandit of six because I used to play I used to play to a scratch level a bit. I played under par a whole bunch of times, but often, most often not. It was like more of a psychological thing, breaking par. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'd say, well, my, my, my best handicap was six, but I, um, I played a hell of a lot lower than that a lot of times. Like I've played, I've actually for, for one, just this must not be bragging, but for what, I played nine holes once with, with a mate, with two friends, and I shot six under par for nine holes. Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> that, that, so you have to be... There has to be something in the locker to be a good golfer, to be yeah. a seriously good golfer, to be able to produce that even just once in, in your life. I mean, I'm sure you've done that. Um, more well, that I've never come close to that again. That was the one-off. That was the one-off. Well, I'm sure you've had some amazing rounds oh, at yeah. a super high level on several occasions. But what interests me is that you, you have a full-time job. Um, more you than know, that, pretty much. <laughs> and and you're, you're still playing to a good level and improving. Whereas I've seen other sportsmen and golfers, I've, you know, I've got a lot of clients that are golfers and they will play four or five times a week. Some retired, some just have lots of time because of their, their job, um, their job type and they're still absolute garbage. So, I mean, what, what <laughs> really is, is the secret to anybody listening who loves golf because it is very popular. What is the secret to improving your game and becoming a really good kind of, competitive level golfer or, or uh, you know, a... a the thing uh, handicap. That'd be the main thing for most people. I think, I, I, think I, just, I think the thing that most people want is to get their handicap down. So that, so that would be their main thing. But what, what would be the secrets on kind of limited time? Limited to time is... To do that. So, you know, you've obviously achieved that whilst not being able to play every single day, for example. So what... what so for me you... personally... Look, I don't practice anywhere near as much as I used to. I used to sometimes practice 20 hours a week, like, mm. which is a ridiculous amount. But now, 
Now I've got my golf clubs just sitting over there by my front door. Um, now I will I'll practice probably once a week. Um, when I say practice, I'm going to go to the range. Um, yeah. And then I'll also, I'll just, if my coach gives me some, some drills to do, a lot of the time he gives me drills to do without a club. So there's one where I stand with my bum against the door or a wall, lean forward, and it's just practicing my rotation and stuff. So there's things like that. There's loads of drills you can do at home. And I just, I just do that literally like 10, 15 times. Then I, I, I get on with the rest of my day. I'll, I'll, if I'm, if I'm at home, I'll swing a golf club. I'll just practice without a ball, yeah. visualization, whatever. But the main thing is practicing smart, which most people don't do. Like I see people at the range, 120 golf balls, um, sometimes more. They have two buckets of balls, and they just hit ball after ball after ball. And there's no, there's no thought process. Yeah. So, uh, for me personally, I'll never ever ever um, get more than 60 golf balls because what I do is I'll make sure that 60 golf balls last me probably an hour. And right. I try to take a minute between every swing between every shot should I say and I think about every shot I, sometimes I play games at the range I will pretend I'm playing my course or a course I know very well where okay on the first hole it's a par five dog leg left I'm going to take driver okay so I put the ball down I can picture in my head how my how the, this this hole looks and using markers on the range and I'll hit my driver so if it's a shit drive yeah. I'll pretend that I'm playing around a, a tree for my next shot. So I have to play like a creative shot. And I'm like, say, okay, I have to bend it around this flag and get it onto that green on the range kind of thing. You know, I'll do things like that. Then I'll, I'll, I'll if, I, if, I, if it goes well, great. If it doesn't, then I'm just, oh, I'll, I'll literally practice a 60-yard chip just to like pitch out to a, at my range, we have these little trampoline things that are about 70 yards away. I'll try chip to that. And then I, I practice that, those sorts of things. So I'm creative with my, with my practice or... The other um, spec end of the spectrum is that I will work out what my pros t told me. I will literally take three, four, five practice swings before every single shot. Because as most golfers, even the ones that don't think about um, their practice, it's all about repetition. So what I'll do is I will practice the mechanics, whatever, practice, yeah. practice, practice. Then I'll stop and then I'll, I'll hit the shot. And then I'll do it again. And if the shot goes great, I, again, I will practice, practice, practice. If it's driver, I practice driver, you know, all different eyes. That's the thing about golf is very rarely all you're firing at all cylinders. So you have to practice all parts of your game. And 99% of golfers know that the most important part of golf is pitching and putting. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but most people don't practice that because it's not as fun as hitting a driver. So, so it's interesting, right? So, so let's say the average golfer, the average casual golfer, and they all do t kind of take it really seriously. I've seen the guys, you know, they'll all, they all get really competitive with their mates and they all want to get better and they play for some money. But the average golfer, he plays what? Two, maybe three times a week, I'd say? Would that no, be no, way less. Do you think? Do you think? Yeah, the, the average golfer. Look, a lot of golfers. Like the average casual golfer, what he plays with his mates once a week and goes to the range once a week, maybe. Couple I'd say, I, I, that I don't know because there's a lot of people that like I've got a big golf group on WhatsApp and there's there's about there's about eighteen of us in the group and there's only about six or seven that play weekly. Yeah. The others, the others sometimes only play a few times a year, but. Um, you know, for, for those guys, like the ones who play a few times a year, all I'd say is go to the range once before you play or get there early and warm up before so you can at least see where you're going wrong. So let, you're... Let's, say, let's say like the ones that take it a little bit more seriously will be listening oh, yeah. to it because people that play a couple of times a year, they're not going to listen to this podcast. They're not, they're no. not really interested. Um, once a know, week at least. I'd yeah, say that... let's say like you're once a week as you're twice a week as goes to the range once and, and plays yeah. with, with their mates once. What what do you think for those individuals would be the most important area of focus when it comes to practicing? Because your time is limited. So you don't want to waste your once a week that you've got to practice doing something that, that is kind of just pointless. So where would you, you think someone well, should focus? I would say if you're going to the I would see where your weaknesses are. So if it's if it's with driving, obviously get a lesson, uh, work on driving and just just work on that one thing because a lot of it's mental. Like for me, my strongest part of my game used to be my driving. Now it's one of my weakest parts, um, and I know a lot of it's psychological. So I know that the, the more I can like 
in like see good drives on the range, the more I'm going to perform, the, the more likely I'm to, going to perform on the course again. So for me, it's just about getting the confidence back with that. But I would say you have to do a bit of everything, especially on the range. I would say be disciplined, take your time, think about your shots. Yeah. But another little small tip is, yeah, if you're, if you only get to practice once a week, um, the best thing to do is get to the golf, golf course you're playing at just a little bit early, 10, 15 minutes, and just to practice your chipping and putting so that you, um, especially the short putts, so people that understand golf, uh, you know, you're going to drop or make the most amount of uh, shots from within, I think it's about four feet. Yeah. So go practice the around the world drill, put like six, seven balls around the hole and just practice short putts, just bang them in, uh, uh, tap them in slowly so they drop on the last roll, just practice short putts, get confidence. Because you're actually going to hold more of those um, short putts. There's loads of drills I could talk about when it comes to that, but it's putting and chipping. So I would say you don't have to warm up properly, just warm up at least with your putting and chipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. Okay, interesting. So... What, one thing that always interested me with you is that you got one ridiculously long drive. Like, you know, I seen your drive and I was like, holy, holy fudge, like that. I mean, that, that goes a long way. And that's not just me that said that. I know a lot of pros have said that to you as well. Yeah. Um, that you, your, your drive is ridiculously long. And that's something that a lot of people would love to have. They would love a super long drive. It's the, it's the um, one thing most people want. Yeah. And, and also at the same time, I imagine it's, um, as a as massive benefit, as long as you could be accurate, it's massively beneficial to have a, a long drive. What what do you think gives you such a long drive? Because you're not a huge guy. You're not no, super I'm not. Poor. Um, I'm you know, five, like, Yeah, some of these competitions you see in Vegas, for example, they're massive dudes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely huge. They're six foot four units and 250 pounds, some of these guys. So you're not a huge guy, but you're driving, you know near the level of some of them and, and like, or near like McElroy's level. Um, yeah, I've, I've, um, I, I'd say that, yeah, I've hit some 400 yard drives and they haven't been windy those days either, but yeah. normally it's about 320, 330. So yeah, I do drive the ball a long way. And actually my theory is from the days we used to box all that, cause the boxing mechanics is very, very simple. So along with health and fitness, if you guys want to drive further and get fit, then start boxing. So, so it, that do you, you're saying, what you're saying for someone who's listening doesn't really understand is the twisting and the talking off the torso, yeah. um, that kind of transverse rotational plane, power through that plane that you developed over the years, you feel yeah, that's yeah. crossed over into golf. Definitely. Look, I think there is some genetics involved in whatever. Um, but that, all that explosive training, we did it, oh, I did it with you for, what, seven years? We used to box three, four, five times a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it's that explosive power it's a lot of the same people don't realize that a right cross if you're right-handed that is a right a right straight punch you use a lot say a lot of the same mechanics as a as a golf swing so it's that constant because golf is also very one-sided it uses more muscles on one side of the body more than the other yeah um, they're all working i'm pretty sure but um it's just like that right punch in boxing so i would say it's that and i also think uh, my first teacher um the one that actually ended up tweaking my swing too much I th he gave me one of the best drills ever which I think is why I hit the ball far is it's about how to compress the ball so when you with golf if you if you look at all of the, the the golfers online, online on tv they always take divots like this they like, like from anywhere from like there to like there it's like ridiculous um but that's because they compress the ball they hit down on the ball the ball then compresses and then expands and that, that's what gets us to go further so I'll just, uh, have I got anything here? Hold on, I've got a pen. And I'm using my diary just to describe this. So this, this is just some oil. <laughs> but imagine that's the golf ball. I will imagine this is a tee peg. I will put, obviously a tee peg is a lot shorter. I will put the, the, the tee peg like this and then I'll go like this far away. So I've let the length of the tee peg. And I will try and take my club head away and, and uh, without hitting the tee peg and then come down and hit the ball without hitting the tee peg and that's a, that's one of the best drills that ever got given and that just teaches you to compress the ball to hit down on the ball because that creates the ball the compression that's with the iron so you can't hit, do that on driver but with irons and hybrids and stuff you will hit down and you'll take a nice uh, clean divot it won't hurt the hands or wrists and that's another reason why you actually the, the ball goes further plus you create more spin so there's more control 
So I think there's that. Obviously, exercise. We you know you, we know we know all the benefits of exercise. Yeah. I, I, well, one thing is definitely I, I believe that people they don't appreciate how much transverse plane or rotational plane is in sport in general. You know, they, they, they go for a run to get fit to play football, which, which is fine, or, or to get fit to play a sport. But that most sports have a big degree of rotation in. Um, yeah. There's not a lot that don't. You know, all, pretty much all team sports do. Baseball, basketball, you know, cricket, football, rugby, etc. They They've all yeah. got a massive degree of twi- twi- twisting, turning and agility. I mean, I happen to do a sport that doesn't, but it's powerlifting. It's very, you know, just, just one, one plane. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but most sports do, and I think that, especially if you've got a young kid, if you're training them in that way, whether it be through boxing or via getting a trainer and that trainer focusing on those different planes of movement, that's going to cross over massively into to any sport as you get a little bit older, um, yeah, yeah. usually. And I mean, it's definitely interesting you say, you talk about the boxing crossing over into the power of your driving. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And look, a lot of, a lot of people who play golf play other sports as well. But one, it's, it's healthy. Two, it, it's, it's, boxing's just great because it helps you, you know, who doesn't like smashing something, like punching something, whatever. It's good for stress relief. We're, we're got, yeah, you know, if I was, if, if my best advice for, for, for golfers is take up boxing on the side because all the, the, the stress you're going to get from playing golf, because golf is one of the most stressful games, you'll release it all, all uh, boxing or punching a bag or whatever. Yeah, massive. So, yeah. No, I agree. Okay. No, so, so what's your, what kind of common mistakes have you seen on the golf course actually during game times? from other people because you play quite a lot and you play with a lot of friends some who are really good and some maybe not so good yeah. um and and when i see common when i say common mistakes i don't just mean physical technical mistakes i mean psychological ones as well because golf is hugely psych- well all sports is but golf golf yeah. especially there is hugely psychological you could get someone that's absolutely smashing it up and then they get onto the green and they're putting or something just falls apart or they're seven, eight holes through a game, killing everyone and they just completely crumble. So what yeah, kind yeah. of common mistakes have you seen from that level of golfer on a golf course? Yeah, so yeah, I play with, uh, there's one guy who I play with who's just a, a machine. It kills me playing with him because he's, he's unreal. <laughs> he's unreal. But the, most of the other guys are, are um, uh, like I'd say, the, the next best. There's 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 a couple that I've heard that are actually very good, but most of them are in there. The low to mid had like t- teens in terms of handicap, so 12 to 16, and then there's a bunch in the high teens and low 20s. But uh, a lot of the guys like to call me the caddy because I I help people out while I'm playing. But I was one of my I say one of my greatest achievements uh, on the golf course was actually my friend Craig that. Uh, He's never, ever broken 90 before. He plays over 21. He's played golf for, for probably close to 20 years. And they never broke 90. And I finally helped him do it uh, September, October last year. Nice. And I literally said to him, you're not allowed to make any decisions during this round of golf. I'm going to tell you exactly what shot to play. Da, da, da. So it's actually course management. I'd say the, the biggest issue, excuse me swearing, but it's the fuck it moment where people go, oh, hey, it's... Man, swear we like, we like the old swear word. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's when people go, oh, fuck it, I'll go for the, the wonder shot or, you know, no guts, no glory. That's it's bollocks. One of the best bits of advice that started me getting playing good again after a year and year and a half of playing really erratic golf was my, my coach that I've got now. He said to me, just play boring golf. He's like, don't, you know, because I can, as you know, as I said, we drive the ball a long way. So like if it's a 350 yard par four. 90% of the time I'd be trying to drive the green and then I'm in the trees and then I'm getting bogey or double bogey. And I'm like, mm. it's the risk reward. So it's take, one of the, the, the biggest mistakes is people not taking their medicine. If you're in the trees and there's a small gap, you're not savvy, hit it, play it backwards, play it sideways, take your medicine, try and get on the green for the next shot. Yeah. You know, or like for instance, he was quite often, I'll, I'll never actually figure that around, but he was quite often, he was about 190 yards from, from a green, like a par five, a par four and whatever. And he pulls out his hybrid and I'm like, no, put it back. He's like, what do you mean? I can get there. I'm like, but you're not going to. I said to him, listen to me. I said, afterwards, take a, put another ball down and, and, uh, as, a, as, a, as a fun ball and try to play that. 
I said, just take a six iron, put it in the fairway, like a hundred yards away or whatever. And then, and then said, try going the green for three or whatever it is. And he did it. And I said, look, now try to take your hybrid. And of course he, the hybrid either he topped or he sliced or whatever. And I just said, it's just course management. So that's definitely the biggest, the biggest mistake that myself included but definitely the, the mid to high teens and low 20 handicap of golfers make us they, they look, we always want, they, they, we always want to play that amazing shot. But for me personally, you know, you'll hit a really nice drive that will go for, for someone 200, 180, 200, 250 yards or whatever. And it's great. You watch it in the air. It's beautiful. It's like literally poetry in motion. Only golfers understand by the way, this <laughs> most people think about like, what, but the best feeling is, at the end of that round, when you when you total up your score and you and you've shot like some unbelievable score, like I can't, I can't tell you how happy he was to break ninety. She didn't do eighty eighty. He shot an eighty eight. That was yeah. massive, and, and it wasn't an easy course either. So um, it's course, the biggest mistake people make is not is is bad course management, um, taking on shots they have no right to take on. I'm I'm I, you know I'm at fault for that too sometimes. Um, but there's there's something about golf that you just want to you you feel like you can play off the shot. Look, if you're playing well, you're playing well. But just play boring golf. That's the that's the best bit of advice I could give people. Is literally just try keep it in the fairway. If you're in the trees and you don't have a clear shot or whatever, take your medicine, hit it out, try again. Interesting. Okay. And what about? I, I think that's a, definitely a big one. That that's really good advice for a lot of people. It's course management, not getting carried away. Um, not doing more than you think you can do as well. It might come off once in 50 times, but yeah. most times it won't come off. It's going to really affect your game and you're going to just slide downhill. Yeah, I, actually got a client, I actually got a client recently um, and he's a big golfer. And uh, let's say the guy has got an indifferent temperament and he was, he was playing a game with four or five of his friends. He plays off a low handicap. I think he's like a six as well. And he was absolutely flying. He was winning the game. And he played a couple of bad shots. And for some reason, you know, he's played 10 rounds of, of good shots. He plays one or two bad shots. And that's all he can, all his brain can get stuck on is those two bad shots. And actually, he lost his temper so badly, took his golf club, boom, walloped it against his golf bag. Anyway, goes back, finishes the round, ends up losing the game, comes like third, finishes the round. And his wife has rung his friend, said, where's so-and-so? I won't mention his name because he might listen to this. Even though he'd probably, he'd probably appreciate me mentioning him, he'd laugh. I said, where's, where's so-and-so? Why isn't he answering his phone calls? So I don't know. So he goes, goes to his bag, picks out his phone, and he smashed his phone to smithereens. <laughs> his phone was exactly where he walloped it with a golf club. So not only did he lose, he had to spend a few hundred quid on a new phone as well. So yeah, there's something thanks. about that where people just, you know, they, they just, like, like you're saying, their course management and also their emotional management is that one or two bad shots doesn't make a bad round. No. All of a sudden they, they just can. apart. But um, one other thing is specific exercises outside the golf course. Anything you'd recommend in particular? I know we spoke again briefly about boxing um, and core work, et cetera, but... Any specific exercises, whether it's one or three or four, that you would recommend people do, say, on a daily that can improve the mechanics of their game? Any, anything, like we said, that involves rotation and power. Power. Most people don't think about power. Because golf is, a, is actually a power sport. Most people think it's a stroll when you hit a ball and then you walk a bit more and then you hit, a bit, you hit another ball. But that, that movement of swinging, especially the full swing, because yeah. golf is a mixture of power and finesse, but it depends on the shots. But the the full swing we'll talk about, it would be, look, certain things like, funny enough, this is like when I'm at the computer a lot, grip strength is really important. Yeah. That's actually just an easy one. I've got a few little things here that when I'm just sitting on my, on my laptop, now I'm doing all virtual sessions, so I'm training people online, and I'm constantly just squeezing. So grip strength, that's an easy one, because you'd be surprised how important it is your forearms and your grips to be strong in golf. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean hold the club really tight. It just means to have a strong grip. Um, two, anything rotational. 
if you want to get one bit of equipment to help your golf, it's grab a medicine ball and practice walk, like literally, like almost like a rugby throw, like this, just yeah, constantly yeah. do it against a wall with a heavy, heavy yeah, yeah. ball. Um, anything that's rotational, things with your legs, the squats is obviously a good one because you're driving what, up. What about ground. things like lunges with rotation? Yeah, those things. But I'd say if you're just okay, thinking okay. golf, I'd say more squats with rotation and okay. more squats in general and squat jumps because golf is you're bending and then you're straightening, you're standing up into the shot a lot. Most people might not agree with me, but um, you're standing up, you're, you're exploding, but it's, it's all that movement, all that rotational energy. So a lot of like Russian twists with the medicine ball while you're sitting on your bum, all those things. But one of the biggest things most people also forget about is flexibility. Um, Massive. Yeah, so lots of back stretches, loads of leg stretches, stretching after the round. Um, all these things help you stay injury free. And um, yeah, it's, it, look, it's a combination thing. But if I could say anything, it would be squats, um, definitely squats or weighted squats or squats for rotation, getting a medicine ball. What was the first one I said as well? Oh, and grip strength. Grip strength, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, all good tips because, again, golfers seem to neglect their gym work a lot. Not professional golfers, but anything yeah. below that level, they neglect their gym work massively. Um, and I think that's important. I mean, if you're not sure, um, doing some yoga is always great um, for sure. Yeah. Or you hire a trainer. If you're serious and you've got some money, hire a trainer, hire a personal trainer that knows about yeah. sports and being sports specific. That's, yeah. that's, you know, that if you're serious about improving your game, sometimes you can just really improve by improving your, your physical ability. Um, yeah. In fact, you can always improve, not sometimes, you can always improve by improving your physical ability. And so, you know, there's no point going to the gym, standing on the cross trainer, doing a bit of this machine and that machine. Go and get a trainer a couple of times a week, once, twice a week. Um, and that can really help you in itself. Um, so, I mean, we've covered a lot. It's been really good. And looking at the kind of mental side, course management, so, some things to do outside the um, golf course so in the gym etc what Another about thing. any literature yeah but, i was just gonna, i was just gonna grab one of them. so books um they all so this is probably one of the most famous um uh, uh authors when it comes if, to if, golf. if you're little, hold that up again for me dude hold that up again for me if you're listening and you're not got the um the video it's the golfer's mind by dr bob rotella yeah so like things like Bob Rotella, we're not plugging anyone. We don't get anything for plugging. No, we're not plugging. We're not plugging. But yeah, I've read so many golf books over the years. I love them um, a lot. That's not he's not even that's not even the best book. I actually lent the best book to a friend as I would have shown that one. But yeah, golf uh, things. A lot of, I've read pretty much all of Bob Rotella's books. I've read um, some Dave Peltz ones, which are, which are very interesting. I've read, I can't think of the name of the one off, offhand. I'll, I'll message you and you can put it in a link because that one is by far the best. Any, any books or anything you recommend um, or anything like that, I'll put it in the show notes after. All right, cool. Yeah, but they, they're, they're just good. And they're actually good to read every so often. Like if you find one book that's really like really helpful, just stick with that one book and just go back to it. I, well, the, the one I lent my friend, it's like literally full of highlight notes. So I can literally, sometimes I can go back. I'll see if this one is as well, actually. So yeah, no, straight away, like literally no, you practice, see. practice what he preaches. Yep. So it's just a certain highlight notes. So I can just literally flick through a page and read something that, and that just might trigger something. Um, might remind you something that you're on the golf course and you, you hit a bad shot, you know, cause it's, re it's way easier said than, than done to forget about the bad shot yep. um, or the three putt you've had or whatever. But um, you know, I definitely think, that you know the because golf is so mental it's ridiculous any any person that who have listened to this video if they they'll understand that you could be all set ready to play your shot and on your it's always somehow somehow on your backswing and you'll the thought will come into your head like don't hit it right or don't top it or don't slice it what will happen immediately i have night like almost 98 percent of the time you'll do what you thought don't do yeah. and it's just, sometimes those will right. creep in but it's, it's about like red, food. red car syndrome, isn't it? Yeah. Like you think about it and that's it. it just, just get all goes, goes to bits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, definitely golf literature. I find it so useful. Actually, I've, I've still got a couple of books that I want to read. I want to reread the one that I can't think of the name of um, again. But it's just, especially time like this, I've got so much uh, free time on my hand. 
on, on my hands that you know it's just good to do and that actually if you're if you're really into a golf it's just enjoyable yeah yeah, yeah so I, I would definitely recommend that but you know the biggest thing for me is practice smart with your golf it's that's the main thing you that you can do it's just literally not too often and be a yeah. little bit more specific about what it is you want to achieve yeah you want to hit the ball further you want to hit the ball further one it's not what you do going to the range and hitting driver every time isn't going to help you hit further buying a new club is very rarely going to help you hit the ball further yeah new technology comes out that you can hit the ball five ten yards further yeah but so but, can everyone <laughs> yeah but in terms of actually getting getting better control and distance on, on your irons especially practice that drill i told you about so we get a t-peg t-peg is about this long i start if you're an if you're a high handicapper go about two well it's probably about this Go about two T pegs distance behind the ball. Have the T peg like this way when the ball's here, and try to take your club away and hit the ball without hitting the T peg. And then as you get better, get bring the T peg closer to the ball. Just things. Practice one thing at a time. Don't try practice a bit of everything. You know, yeah. if you if you like for me, my driving is the worst. So what I do at the range is I will hit more drives. So if I'm if I'm practicing an all round thing where I'm doing the whole visualization thing, that's fine. But if I'm working on my driver, sometimes I'll go there with the, the driver range with the driver and a three wood, and I'll hit sixty drives. And some, and I'll even play around with it. I'll practice driving with the deck. I'll practice um, trying to shape different shots, you know, just yeah. to get more confident. So it's practicing one thing at a time. Don't do too much too soon. Um, I would definitely say play, try it. I'd say to, to anyone, try play boring golf, especially the, the mid to high handicapper. Yeah. Don't go for any heroics. Just see if I'm wrong. Leave a comment down below. I just and, I, and Louis, don't tell me. <laughs> no, but they, they do, there's always something to be taken. If you're not, if you're never doing that, if you're always playing aggressive, um, risky golf, and you know you're not improving and you're and you're not winning, that you've got to try something else. And unless you try something for not once, for two, three, four months at a time, then you know ultimately you're not going to know. So only a narrow-minded person is an open-minded to to try and different things. So it's, it's all great advice. Everything that you've given today is great advice. And I know you could go, you could probably talk for two, three hours and really be a lot more specific and in depth because I know it's a, a real passion of yours, but we just don't have that time. <clears throat> yeah. um, but essentially, if someone could take four or five things out of today's podcast, they can improve their golf. They can get a good coach, look to get a good Personal One training. thing I forgot to mention, actually, another thing. Sorry, right. I just was thinking before I forget. But another thing people do is they'll they'll they will change coach too often. That's another end of the spectrum. But right. one, they'll do that. But two, they will. Like a friend of mine, he he's ever since he got a dog, he's kind of stopped playing golf. But he he got obsessed. But he would look at it was I know, really weird. Anyway, <laughs> but um, <laughs> so it's so random. Some, some but, dog. <laughs> yeah, literally, he got a little little. Sausage dog, and he does. He he plays golf like three times a year. He was literally playing two, three times a week. Um, they treat it like like a proper bit anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and um, he would have a lesson with someone, and then he would go online and look at loads of YouTube videos, and he would get so much information, and he would never get any better. And I was like, I said to him, just focus on get have lessons from your coach, focus on it, work on one thing. But another thing is also you practice to to for repetition once you so for me once i'm on the golf course if i'm thinking about just say from the golfers on say if i'm if i'm working on turning my hands over on the follow-through or a setup position setup position is easy actually because you can think about that on, on the courses but you're not you don't want to have lots of swing mechanics in your thought process when you're, when you're playing a shot you do it in your practice swings and then you literally look at the ball you visualize the shot you play your you, you play your shot. Any good golfer, I've read all the books. I'm not I'm not amazing. I've owned up. I'm a six handicapper. There's lots of golfers out there better than me. But you want to think about as little as you want to just focus on the shot. What the shot's going to look like. Play the shot. You don't want to be thinking. I need to draw my hands back. I need to flex the wrists. I need to hold it here. I need to keep my elbow tucked in more. I can't have it winging out. I mean, I you know, there's so many. Like it autonomous. Yeah. So. You practice on the range what you want to do on the course, or you practice on the, on the practice, <coughs> range, practice yeah. range. And then when you're on the course, you just want to you just want to swing. You want to have as little thought process as possible. For me personally, I will have one thing I'll think about on the on, uh, on my swing. One thing that I'm working on. The rest, I just don't. I just feel. You know, I don't think. Okay, 
bring back there, 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 follow through. Da, 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 da. I just think about one thing and it's just to simplify it. So on the range, think about it, make all the mistakes on the range, come on the course, just play. Interesting. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, 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 it's interesting. It's, it's um, you know, people are going to hear a lot more value on today's podcast from you talking to me because that's what it's for. Um, but I mean, to take away, like I said, you've given some great tips and that would be to get a coach if you haven't got one already. Um, look at getting a trainer, personal trainer to improve your physical form if you haven't got one already or doing some yoga. Um, or some online, so Yeah, trainer stuff you can look on. That, that, that they can look online for, or on YouTube. For as long as they'll do it, you know what people are like. As long as yeah, people yeah, stick yeah, yeah. and be consistent with it. Um, course management, I thought, think that was probably your, your best tip of today for sure. Um, yeah. A great one. We went through having better course management and you know maybe being a little bit less risky um, with the things that you're doing on the golf course. Um, some books that you mentioned, some literature that you mentioned. Um, just being smarter with the way that you practice, not over-practicing but aimlessly. Yeah. Um, I think they're all great tips. I mean, is there? I know you've got to shoot. I know you've got um, work to go back to. Is there um, any, anywhere that people can find you if they want to get in contact with you, whether it's regarding training, coaching, or anything like that? Um, do you have an Instagram or an email or anything along those lines? Uh, I did have an Instagram, but I just actually haven't used it. I need to get back into the whole uh, Instagram thing. I'm going to start still it up. Yes, pardon? Is it still live, your Instagram? I, I think so. It's the Everyday Golfer. Yeah, so the I, Everyday I, Golfer, I, yeah. But as you know, I got too busy with the PT work, so... I, uh, I went from doing 30 sessions a week to like 50 sessions a week and with all the travel. But yeah, that's something I'm going to be doing the spring, summer is the everyday golfer. Um, hit me on messages on there. I'm going to be posting things and drills and tips. I've still got a whole library of things that I want to actually put up just to help people out, whoever wants them. Nice. Um, and you can direct, you can click, I definitely have it on my phone. I've just got a new phone. So just trying to sort that out. And um, yeah. Cool, awesome, man. Thanks for having, um, thanks for coming on, rather. I really thanks appreciate it. I know people are going to get a um, really good takeaway from this today. Um, guys, if you've got any kind of questions or things we haven't covered, leave them in the comment section below. Um, if it's on YouTube or just knock me over an email. Um, but, it's, mate, it's been great having you on today and uh, we'll do it again sometime soon. Yeah, yeah, we should actually do, what we should do next time is let's do, a different we can just do like a half an hour 45 minute on one section of golf like short game putting and i'll go into more depth yeah i think people would love that definitely let's do all that right. we'll book it in we'll get on all right we've got time all right, <laughs> see you later. Have a good one. thanks man take care Bye.